Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Rissa Watches. I'm Marissa, I just watch stuff. Today I'm checking out um, Supernatural Season 1, Episode 3, Dead in the Water. I don't know what to expect from this one. First two uh, episodes, I had an idea of what was going to happen. This one, I do not, I'm going in completely blind. Um, yeah, I don't get anything from that title. But we'll see, maybe, like the pilot episode, you know, the episode will speak to you. <laughs> Thank you all for welcoming me into the Supernatural family. Um, my friend uh, that loves Supernatural since it came out, um, she said the fandom is passionate. <laughs> So, thank you for welcoming me. <laughs> oh, and uh, I want to, uh, I don't know if I'd call it spooky, but, you know, I live in a murder house, right? Oh, murder-suicide house, actually. People lived here, like, three months before we moved in, you know. Um, but, um, it's been about a month and a half-ish. Nothing weird has happened. The only one unexplainable thing, and it, it doesn't scare me or anything, it's just more of like a, hmm, that's interesting, you know, kind of a thing. Um, our detergent fell off the shelf and was on the floor and just like exploded everywhere. But it's the only thing that fell off the shelf, <laughs> and we don't know how it fell off the shelf. It's kind of weird that it fell off the shelf. Like it fell, fell onto the, to the, it hit the washer, it bounced off, and then it went onto the floor, and then it just went everywhere, and it was there for a while, because it was, like, drying when we saw it, but no one was home, it was just the dogs. <laughs> um, I wouldn't call it spooky, maybe we had a little earthquake, there's a lot of um, construction, like, literally next door, because I live in, a, in an intersection. And it's right there and they're like using those like jackhammers and those giant like pulverizers and things and so you can feel the ground like shaking every time they use it the house like <laughs> every time they use it so possibly it could have already been like you know close to the edge the last person who used it and then that little like you know it could have just and that's when it fell hit the washer and then hit the floor so, as you can tell, when I experience things, I rationalize, I'm, it's kind of hard to convince me. <laughs> you know, even if I live in where it's happening. Have you ever lived in a house like that? Um, have you ever had any kind of strange, something strange happen? You know, because even if you don't believe in it, it's still pretty interesting and fun, you know. And then, um, as far as uploading videos goes, um, my goal is to have upload three a week. I'm not exactly sure what days. Minimum, I'm gonna try, you know, that's gonna be the minimum. I'll try to do a couple more, but it'll always be three a week. I have to be a bit quiet, because it is very, very early right now very early um couldn't sleep so i thought why not you know <laughs> i have to be a bit quiet because it is very very early right now very early um couldn't sleep so i thought why not you know <laughs> hey you know so also, the supernatural reactions I'm gonna save for nighttime. I'm really looking forward to see how their relationship plays out, Dean and Sam, with each other, and then the relationships they have with other people, more so with Dean than Sam, because Sam, we've already seen him experience that openness with the first episode, you know, and I haven't seen anything from Dean, um, so I'm excited to see you how he handles that kind of stuff. I feel like he's gonna be like, until like it comes to the girls. <laughs> but I may be wrong. I may be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. 
we'll see because there's a difference between being a ladies man and then being someone who could be a good partner completely different things so let's see what kind of shenanigans Dean and Sam get up to alright let's watch guys don't like buff girls yeah well girls don't like guys who still live at home <laughs> oh my god, something's in the water. Oh, I don't like open water. I'm very much afraid of the ocean. I just feel like I have a healthy dose of respect. You know? Oh, it's, I hate dark water. I hate you will not catch me out in water like that. Nope, nope. Nope. Closure. Oh, Amy Aker. What closure? Fred. People don't just disappear, Dean. But until then, we're gonna kill everything bad between here and there. It's gonna take time. Okay. Hey. Huh. Oh, it's a very big brother tone. <laughs> I'm Agent Ford. This is Agent Hamill. Ford and Hamill. I just got it. She was about a hundred yards out. <laughs> We drive that entire lake. We even ran a sonar sweep, just to be sure. And there was nothing down there. What that's is it, swamp thing? I mean, that's, that's the third missing body this year. Sorry, am I interrupting? Yay, Fred. I can come back later. Uh, gentlemen, this is my daughter. Is he OK? Is he not verbal or? We all have. Oh, so you got well, mute from trauma? Never being able to find your way to a decent pickup line? Mm. Enjoy your stay. You don't even like kids. I love kids. Name three children that you even know. <laughs> Christopher Barr was Andrea's husband. Lucas's father. Oh, Lucas. Apparently, he happened. took Lucas out swimming. Can we join you? Now you're gonna be sensitive about it. I'm here with my son. You gotta care, Dean. Oh, I used to love these things. I think I know how you feel. He was around that age, huh? When I was your age, I saw something. That's my dad. That's... That's my mom. That's my geek brother. And that's me. How you got emotional and then just covered it all up right, with so humor I'm a artist. instantly. I'll see you around, Lucas. That's what all that bravado, all that, you know, snarkiness, all the back talk, all the comedy. He used to have such life. He was hard to keep up with, to tell you the truth. Now he just sits there. Thanks. Thanks, Lucas. <laughs> I don't know why that made me so emotional. <sighs> Sorry, it's just, you know, having gone through a trauma myself as a teenager, it hurts to see young kids going through any kind of trauma or illness or anything, you know. It just always gets to me, makes me so sad, so, you know. Little boy, <laughs> he's so young. <sighs> he feels so empty without his baby. That was his princess. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. You should be getting scared now. It is so it moves through water. As long as there's a body of water, it can get to you. Pipes? It can get to anyone. Or your family. My children are gone. It's... It's worse than dying. What do you think? <laughs> I feel so bad for him. I think the poor guy's been through hell. But see, my mom... I know she wanted me to be brave. 
and I do my best to be brave. And maybe your dad wants you to be brave too. What you said about mom. It's no big deal. It's okay to talk, Dean. That's the house. What well, we're sorry to bother you, ma'am. But does a little boy live here by chance? Peter's been gone 35 years now. So was he the first one? That must be so hard. Just wants him to sacrifice himself. Lucas, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Stay. Lucas, it's okay. I think that's the first time I've seen real emotion on Dean's face. You don't ever darken my doorstep again. Did he kill that little boy? Door number two sounds good. He killed that kid. That cop had to have killed that kid. I just don't want to leave this town though. I know the kid's okay. Who are you? And what have you done with my brother? Mm. Shut up. It has to be lake water, right? <laughs> so are you buried? Peter's bike. Who are you? It was an accident. Peter was the maybe. smallest one. We always pulled it. But they covered it up. But this time, we got rough. We were holding his head under the water. Oh, no. We didn't mean to. No. Lucas! Lucas! He's, he's, he's just a little boy. Please, not his fault. Why? Please take me. Let's load this in the car. Hi, holding up. It's just gonna take a long time to sort through everything, you know? Very important phrase, so I want you to repeat it back to me one more time. Yep. That's right, bye bye. <laughs> Sam, move your ass. We're gonna run out of daylight before we hit the road. Okay. That was episode three. <laughs> I did not expect that one to make me cry. I didn't think I was gonna cry this early. Probably wasn't even meant to be that emotional. <laughs> but I could just be a crybaby. But yeah, anything that has like a parent-child, one of them dying or something like that, or it just it just gets to me having lost one of my own parents. Anything like that, just blah, you know. <laughs> just mm -mm. it's nice that we got to see that Dean has the capacity and capability to love and to open up. He's just still very guarded um, from his past experience. Sam slowly coming to terms with the fact that it's going to take a while before they find their dad. I wonder if finding their dad is just the story arc for this season or if it's the story arc for the entire show. Like at the end of season one, it's going to be they find their dad and then you know, it's like a catch-up or whatever, and then he informs them that there's like an even bigger mission. Like, hey, just so you know, this was like the warm-up, you know? 
because I know I looked again and it said it has like 20 seasons oh my god they can't be 20 seasons trying to find their dad so this has to you know arc and all that at some point I like how they had Amy Aker Amy Acker um Fred from the Angel series the Buffy spinoff series but yeah, every time I see her and anything, I just think Fred, you know. And I'm really liking the show a lot. Three episodes in, and I'm enjoying it very much. Um, episode one, episode two, episode three, all very good. Let's see if episode four is just as good, um, or better. But yeah, and uh, since I have time, I'm just going to go into episode four. Um, thank you for joining me, and I will see you on the next one.